All right. So I have three articles for you, each in their own way describing the absolute madness of Trump and what his administration would do if he were to be reelected. And just seriously, his descent into complete, um, complete Looney Tune, though. So, let's start with the first article from Politico. And it is titled, We Watch 20 Trump, Trump Rallies, His Racist Anti-Immigrant Messaging is Getting Darker. So... Let's get right into just how bad things are getting. Donald Trump vowed to rescue the Denver suburb of Aurora, Colorado from the rapist, bloodthirsty criminals, and most violent people on earth, he insists, are ruining the fabric of the country and its culture. Immigrants. Right. Because the shooter who shot up, um, I believe it was a movie theater in Aurora, was totally an immigrant, right? Oh, wait, no, he wasn't. Trump's message in Aurora, a city that has become a central part of his campaign speeches in the final stretch to Election Day, marks another example of how the former president has escalated his xenophobic and racist rhetoric against migrants and minority groups he says are genetically predisposed to commit crimes. And he's genetically predisposed to be totally obsessed with genetics. For someone who has no concept of genetics, he is enamored with it. You might say he like he's into eugenics. Anyway, the supposed threat migrants posed is the core part of the former president's closing argument as he promises his base that he's the one who can save the country from a group of people he calls animals. Stone-cold killers, the worst people, and the enemy from within. <sighs> First off, I'd like to point out that technically humans are animals, so technically he's not wrong on that one, but let's face it. Animals are only used against people that you want to dehumanize, and especially Especially when that dehumanization is pointed at black and brown people. Because, let's face it, he, there are, there, I'm sure there are illegal immigrants who happen to be white. I doubt he would use any of these um, adjectives to describe them. Even if they were bad people. He is no longer just talking about keeping immigrants out of the country, building a wall, and banning Muslims from entering the United States, which in itself is horribly dumb. I mean, are there bad Muslims? Yeah, but we also have seen plenty of bad Christians. What's your point? Just because you follow a religion does not make you a bad person. All right. Trump now warns that migrants have already invaded, destroying the country from inside its borders, where he uses as a means to justify a second-term policy agenda that includes building massive detention camps and conducting mass deportations. Okay. First off, now notice... He's talking, okay, he's talking about migrants. So these are people who come across the border looking for a job. And you know who um, entices them to do that? Employers. So, migrants are here to do a job. Usually crap jobs that no Americans, no matter how desperate they are, will ever do. Like, like um, fruit picking in Florida. You know, most Americans actually, probably no Americans would ever do this job. So they need migrants to do this. 
I mean, what do you expect to happen if migrants are doing jobs that nobody else wants to do, that no citizen wants to do? What do you think is going to happen to that industry if all these migrants are deported? Um, let's see. Well, you know that orange juice from Florida that you like? You can kiss that goodbye because who the hell's going to pick the oranges now? Anyway. Um, not to mention how inhumane it is to put them in detention camps. This brings back memories, and I'm sure that George Takei is having serious PTSD at this point. Of when, um, at, during World War II, because Japan was on the side of Germany and attacking the U.S., obviously all Japanese Americans were bad people, even if they've never set foot in Japan. They must, they must just genetically be predisposed to um, backing Japan in the war because, I don't know, people don't know how genetics works, which in the case of Donald Trump is, a, is terribly true. So, now, the, and again, the mass deportations, I don't know what exactly he thinks is going to, how he feels that this is going to help matters. And, um, then there's, of course, the fact that he doesn't know the difference between migrants, asylum seekers, and, um, illegal immigrants. Because migrants, legal, asylum seekers, legal, and then, of course, there are the illegal immigrants, which, by the very name, yeah, they cross the border illegally, <clears throat> and they're not actually looking for asylum. They're just trying to, but that, I don't think, is a big percentage. Most of these people are asylum seekers from countries that the U.S. has decided that they're going to butt their nose in and destabilize it unto, to the point that what the hell else are they going to do? So we destabilize countries to the point where people need to leave because they're that unstable. And then we tell them, sorry, we're not going to help you. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, I'm getting slightly off track. In his lengthy speech Friday, Trump delivered a broadside against the thousands of Venezuelan migrants in Aurora. Now, notice it's migrants. This, this isn't anyone who's illegal. This isn't anyone who actually is trying to immigrate. These are legal migrants. These are people who are just coming, doing a job, jumping to get jobs, to pay, to send back to home. Um, again, employers encourage this because these are possibly jobs that no American wants to do. They can't get any Americans to take the job, so they rely on migrants. Anyway, <clears throat> and he declared that he would use the Alien Enemies Act, which allows a president to authorize rounding up or removing people who are from enemy countries in times of war to pursue migrant gangs and criminal networks. Okay. Now, the fact that there are some um, migrants who commit crimes, yeah, Absolutely. I mean, this isn't something unusual because American citizens commit crimes as well. They have criminal gangs. They have criminal networks. So, to just say that this is inherent to black and brown people? Mm, no. 
Um, so yeah, if that's all he was going for is are people who are get, part of gangs and crim, criminal networks and who have committed crimes. Yeah, those people should be deported. If you're going to come here just to commit crimes, absolutely fine. But, um, I didn't realize that, um, we're at war with Venezuela. Yeah, that's new to me. I mean, what war? What war are we having with Venezuela right now? So, yeah, obviously, you know, deporting people who actually commit crimes yeah, absolutely, that, that should be a thing, and it is a thing, but assuming that just because you're, the color of your skin is black or brown, and you happen to not be a citizen of the U.S., that you are inherently bad, no, no, not a thing. So Kamala has imported an army of illegal alien gang members and migrant criminals from the dungeons of the third world, from prisons and jails and insane asylums and mental institutions, and she has had them resettled beautifully into your community to prey upon innocent American citizens, he said. Okay, first off, what the fuck? People have been coming across the border for ages. This is nothing new. And they have, and some of them have been committing crimes ever since then. So again, nothing new. This is not something that it's new under Joe Biden. So that's one thing. And imported? Seriously. She didn't go out on some sort of recruitment tour to other countries and say, hey, how would you like to come to the U.S. and make it a shithole? No, she didn't do that. Um, let's see. Now, and I've mentioned, probably mentioned this before, he mentioned insane asylums and mental institutions. Again, he always mentions this every time he's talking about this. Which makes you wonder, and I've heard this many times before, and I've said this many times before, does this dipshit not know what asylum seeker means? Does he think that they're from an insane asylum? And that's what asylum seeker means? That they're seeking to go to our mental institutions? Seriously, what is going on in his head when he thinks asylum seeker? Because that is not what the word means. There are more words, there are more definitions to a word. Asylum? Yes, it's, there isn't. It. Asylum is, can refer to an insane asylum. It could also pe be referring to people who are seeking asylum. In this case, whether it be political asylum or... Um, I'm not sure how, what kind of asylum it would be if um, you're just trying to get away from gang violence because gangs have overrun your community. I don't know what kind of asylum that would be. But, like, political asylum. You know, you go back to your country and the government will kill you. Obviously, that is not the same use of the word asylum as those who belong in an insane asylum, which, you know, we don't use that term anymore. They call them mental institutions. They do not call them insane asylums anymore. So he doesn't know what words mean, and he seems to be stuck in the past. Which, I mean, he's 78, so a lot of people that age are, so that sucks. Anyway. And, and again, that's not happening. Most people who come, even if it's illegal, even if they come um, and they're undocumented and they can't, 
aren't seeking asylum, they're not migrants, and they are legitly here legally, that is still not necessarily happening. I mean, there are probably people who are seeking asylum or who are migrants who, um, or in the case of Haitian immigrants, which um, both Trump and J.D. Vance are um, vilifying, they are here under special protected status because Haiti is a legit shithole right now. Uh, they're slowly working on improving it, but I don't think it's gotten close to the point where they could go back. But even them, they are going after them. So this isn't about whether they're here legally or not. If they're basically saying that we will go after you simply because of the color of your skin. All right, moving on. I've got three articles. This art, this video is going to be forever long. His rhetoric has veered more into, than ever into conspiracy theories and rumors, like when he amplified false claims about Haitian immigrants in Ohio eating pets. And Trump has demonized minority groups and used increasingly dark graphic imagery to talk about migrants in every one of his speeches since the September 10th presidential debate, according to a political review of more than 20 campaign events. It's a stark escalation over the last month of what some experts in political rhetoric, fascism, and immigration say is a strong echo of authoritarians and Nazi ideology. He's been taking Americans and his followers on a journey since really 2015, conditioning them step by step, instilling hatred in a group, and then escalating, says Ruth ben Giat. I think that's how you say your last name. A history professor at the University, New York University, who writes about authoritarianism and fascism and has been outspoken about the dangers of a second Trump administration. So immigrants are crime. Immigrants are anarchy. They're taking our jobs, but now they're also animals who are going to kill us or eat our pets or eat us, she continued. That's how you get people to feel that whatever is done to them, as in mass deportations, rounding them up, putting them in camps, is okay. And for those who um, don't like the the um, comparison to Nazi ideology. How the hell do you think the Holocaust happened? It didn't happen because just, a, because just a few people thought it was a great idea. They got everybody to think that this was a good idea, or at least enough people to make this feasible. The Trump campaign said while the media obsesses over rhetoric, the former president is responding to voters' concerns. Now, granted, there is a problem. We do have an immigration problem. But the fact is, is that there was a solution. There was a bipartisan bill. But Trump told the Republicans he wants to campaign on this issue, so don't pass it. That doesn't sound like somebody who actually wants to fix the issue. It sounds like somebody who just wants power. And in the case of Trump, to stay out of jail. Anyway, the American people care about results that impact their lives. President Trump, President Trump will take action to deport Kamala's illegal immigrants and secure the border on day one. That's what Americans want to hear. Trump press secretary... Caroline Lovett said in a statement to Politico. Again, if that was the case, if he was really if he really cared about about um about fixing the system, then he wouldn't have stopped the Republicans from passing the bill. He would have been like fine. There are other issues that are happening in the US that are just as important and I'm going to focus on them instead because this has been taken care of or we could do even more or whatever but no he he quashed the bill because 
He only cares about what he can campaign on and what will get him power as opposed to actually helping people. Trump has long deployed racist attacks for political gain, including spreading conspiracy theories about whether former President Barack Obama, the nation's first black president, was born in the United States. Yep, Berthergate, I remember that. And when he launched his first campaign in 2015, Trump said Mexico was not sending its best, calling immigrants from the country rapists who are bringing in crime and drugs. He also promised that day to build a great big wall. And the only parts of the wall that aren't falling apart are the parts that Obama built. But yeah. And again, he... For those who refuse to admit that he has a problem with people black or brown, ever since he started as a slumlord, he wouldn't rent to black people. So his racism isn't anything new. He's always been racist. But times have changed and so has he. The country has moved to the right on immigration, including the Democratic Party and Trump's opponent, Vice President Kamala Harris, the daughter of Jamaican and Indian immigrants. Trump repeatedly bashed Harris as dumb, questioned her racial identity, and calls her a DEI candidate, perpetuating the idea that women and people of color can only be in positions of power because of quotas and preferential treatment. And this is why I can understand why some people don't like these DEI requirements because this allows racists to be lazy and say, oh, this person couldn't possibly be competent. They must have gotten it, you know, the easy way because of these quotas. So I can see why some, why black people have a problem with DEI because that just gives cover to racists to be racist. Um, let's see. Of course, she's not a DEI candidate. She got the job because she's qualified. DEI has nothing. doesn't say we're going to just walk out in the street, grab someone, say, okay, now you're doing this job. No, she just happens to be a qualified person who happens to be also black and Indian. It's just disgusting that people are so quick to claim, oh, well, this should be on merit, as if the person you're questioning couldn't possibly have gotten the job on merit. And this has been something that's been going on for with women especially, but everyone, but black people with um, affirmative action. But I don't know, even when I, I remember when I just graduated college and there was this, um, or grad school, I can't remember. And there was this woman on the local news who um, my brother and his friends recognized. And their reaction was, because of how quickly she became an anchor, was, well, who did she blow to get this job? As if, now, I'm hoping they were joking, but still, just this idea that if women go get up through the ranks too quickly, same thing with black and brown people, if they get up through the ranks too quickly, then it must have been done by nefarious means. It couldn't possibly be because they were actually just qualified or may, maybe the station was desperate. It, it's, it's a small station, so. Anyway, Harris has touted her record prosecuting transnational gangs, drug cartels, and human traffickers, and has promised strict enforcement at the southern border, an effort to appease Americans' concerns about illegal migration. The vice president has vowed to go even further than the Biden administration's crackdown on asylum. And actually, it's funny. Um, the right wing are screaming how socialist people like Kamala Harris is, 
or how they're Marxist, communist. I just love it when they say communist and fascist in the same sentence because that tells you, one, they don't know what words mean, and two, they have no clue who the hell Russia, what side Russia was in the in World War II because they were very communist at that point. And no, they were not on the side of Germany. They Fascists and communists do not like each other. But if you go the rest of the world and you look at how they view the Democratic Party, they don't consider them left wing. Our entire political spectrum is right wing, just different, different facets of right wing. So now there is there is um left wing voices like Bernie, AOC, and by left wing I don't mean radical left wing, but you know, people who would be probably maybe moderate in Europe because mo most um right wingers in Europe don't question having um universal health care whereas we think like it's the biggest um socialist bugaboo if we were to do that we should allow people to go into debt for daring to get sick but anyway um, as political conversation about immigration has shifted, Trump has not only intensified his rhetoric, but his policy plans. He has increasingly targeted specific communities, including Springfield, Ohio, Charleroi, Pennsylvania, and Aurora, arguing that immigrants are destroying American towns and cities across the country and using those examples to call for large-scale federal response. Right, by making shit up. Trump has spent the last month on the trail elevating the claims about those communities, even as local officials have been denying these allegations and asking the Republican nominee to stand down. And a lot of these local officials are Republicans, so it's not like this is simply a matter of it's only Democrats because they refuse to believe what Trump is saying. No, Republicans, the Republican mayor of um, Springfield, the Republican governor of Ohio, have both said, stop this, you're just making things worse in Springfield. This is not happening what you're saying. So... No, it's not a bipartisan thing. It's not a partisan thing. It's not just Republicans on one side and Democrats on the other in this issue. There are Republicans who are saying, well, no, this isn't happening. Just like how Trump went hog wild on hurricane response. The Republicans in charge, the Republicans in power, were saying, no, we like the response. Things are going well. But anyway, moving on with this article, maybe I'll do a three-parter. I'm already halfway in. Trump on Friday used false stories about gang takeovers in Aurora as he announced he would remove migrants connected to gangs under an Operation Aurora based on presidential wartime powers under the Alien Enemies Act. While police in Aurora have encountered some gang activity tied to a Venezuelan group, there has been no gang takeover in Colorado. Because of course there isn't. Are, are there, is there crime? Absolutely. Are there immigrants who commit crime? Probably because they have a hard time making a living. Now that, that is not me justifying it, but... You know, if you live in an area where people are telling you, get out, you don't belong here, and you can't find a job, it's going to be rough. So, now, I'm not saying that's all immigrants. Like I said, most immigrants are law-abiding, but there are some who probably 
I mean, there's probably some who did come to because they had this idea of what America would be and the second it doesn't go the way they want, they resort to crime. That's possible. I mean, I don't know what's going on in their heads. I'm not going to try, but to assume that because there is a pocket of gang violence that 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 are perpetuated by immigrants that that's all immigrants we are a country of immigrants for crying out loud now there's one thing that is american about this is that from pretty much the beginning people have been scapegoating new immigrants so this isn't something that just started happening. Xenophobia has been an American value for a long time. Trump on Friday used, oh wait, I read that. I read that already, sorry. Efforts to blame outsiders, a politically voiceless group, which Trump is an expert at doing, has led to atrocities in the United States. Everything from Japanese internment to Operation Wetback, says Ediberto Romain, a Florida International University law professor who studies xenophobia and immigration. Vivid imagery such as telling crowds of rally attendees that migrants will cut your throat are now a staple of Trump's speeches. He cites cases of U.S. women and girls allegedly murdered by immigrants in the country illegally, even if studies have shown that immigrants are less likely to commit crimes than U.S.-born Americans. Exactly. Okay. Again, yes, there are some immigrants who commit crime. There, that is, that there's no argument there. But to act like no, no U.S. citizen ever commits crime, and crime only started because of these nasty immigrants who come across the border, is just insane. That is not how this works. It's not like we were completely without crime before this. Crime existed. Anyway, but Trump says they are because they are inherently worse people. He's told nearly all white crowds in the past that they have good genes. Even before his explicit suggestion this week that non-white immigrants are genetically inferior, when he told conservative radio host Hugh Hewitt that immigrants have bad genes. Yes, they have bad genes because they're not white. I mean, it's just that simple. White people have good genes. Non-white people don't. I mean, gee, I wonder what the difference is. Hmm. Could it be that he thinks white people are inherently superior? What is, there's a word for that. Oh yes, white supremacist. And so does it su surprise you that white supremacists um, are at his beck and call and planning to vote for him and endorse him? Of course they do, because they're, because he's like them. I mean, it, I don't know what else to tell you if you still don't see that. And if you claim that, oh, I like Trump for these other things he plan he says he's going to do, you're still pl you're still willing to ignore all the crap that he's spouting. So, if you're willing to wade through all the shit for the slight nugget of gold that you might find, um, you're still covered in shit. What is so jarring to me is these are not neo-Nazi, these are not just Nazi-like statements. These are actual Nazi sentiments that Robert Jones, founder of the Public Religion Research Institute, the author of The Hidden Roots of White Supremacy and a vocal critic of Trump's rhetoric. Hitler used the word vermin and rats multiple times in Mein Kampf to talk about Jews. These are not accidental or coincidental references. We have clear 20th century historical precedent with this kind of political language, and we see where it leads. Hell, even make America great again. You know who initially used that phrase? The Ku Klux Klan. 
and I can assure you they were racist. They hated black people. Their whole their whole thing was to get to get black people out of their communities because they were inherently bad. So he, from the very beginning, he's been doing this. It's not like this is anything new. So anyway, that is the end of that article. Now, I think I'm just going to do this next article in another video because this video is over half an hour and this next one though it shows how absolutely unhinged he is and how much he wants to be a dictator, it also has nothing to do with immigration. Let me see the third article to see if, um, nope, that's also a different topic. So I will end this video here, and I will see you guys in the next video.